this video I'll be covering some ways how to figure out where the target is that you just sighted and how to convey that bearing. So while your Abris cannot steer you, it cannot have you follow a route or put your schwalm direction, what you can do is have, especially with the laser off, use your helmet sight maybe, point your schwalm direction and watch this yellow line indicating your schwalm is line of sight. Point it over the target, perhaps a tactical threat or some other indication like a wingman circle. You know, especially if it doesn't have a laser ranging, so it's not accurately placing and tracking it where it should be, and possibly if you're pointing it up into the sky. Then this line can extend into infinity basically, and you can have it intersect whatever you're chasing. And then you can, for example, put on order turn and or route mode to have your shock follow that flight path. So indirectly it is a way to guide your shock onto a target. Not super accurately, but it can do it to a reasonable extent. Now, if you wanted to have an exact tracking gate location, you of course have to laser range you know, very soon before watching it, and on the Abris, it'll appear pretty much where it needs to. Especially over rough terrain, you might need to laser range to have it get a more accurate gauging of where it is. Now, unfortunately, there's no quick instantaneous method to exactly gauge where your schwal is pointing. The shark obviously knows where it is, but it's not going to tell you this on any of the systems. So outside of just winging it and going, well, it's off my left, so that means it's, you know, in this direction or that. If you are, of course, pointing exactly towards your schwal's target, i.e. you're literally, it's facing forwards, then of course you can just read your heading off the HSI or off the T-head button on your PVI 800. Now the fastest method of guesstimating the range is simply by looking at your HSI, so you can see, or looking at the T-head button, so you know where you're pointed, and then you look at how far your schwal is offset, and you guess the difference. So on your IT23 screen, to the left of the center and to the right is 30 degrees to this notch. Your HUD also shows it, but your HUD also has demarcations for every 10 degrees. So in this case, I would read my current true heading of the HSI or the tiered button, and then guesstimating the offset at the top of the HUD or the top of the IT23 screen and you know, subtracting 10 degrees in this case. Of course, ultimately it helps if you gain a general sense of your current heading at any point in time. So that you're able to, using head math without looking at the HSI, know where something is roughly. So, by extension, depending on how far forward in your VR or head tracking viewpoint is, i.e. if you move your real life face forwards or backwards, these canopy struts are about 10 degrees left and right. These ones are about 20 degrees off your heading. Clearly that's 90 degrees left and right, and at about 110 degrees, you lose your helmet mounted side reticle. So if you can remember your true heading and do a little head math, you can work out an estimate of the bearing quite quickly. For more accurate methods on getting a Schwal's bearing, you can also try using the ARC page on the Abris. This works best if your Schwal ranged a really high number and you were scaled in on the Abris or you didn't even range, so it's just pointing into infinity. This way the schwal line might cross the compass rows on the outside of the arc, and you could read it off those bearing notches more accurately. If the schwal gate is falling short, or not near the compass rows, just slew upwards, possibly switching off the laser, and get it to cross the compass rows. More accurate methods than this require you to laser the target for a ranging number, and then save it as a dialing target or target point and then you need to recall it. Now with both of these methods, even though the PVI and the PRTZ are normally disconnected, as soon as you put on DL ingress, or you select an nav target point, it controls both of the HSI in normal direct heading modes, and it also gives information through to the PVI, so they are connected in that small way. So now you can look at your HSI on the dashboard, and it will now show you the bearing of the target that you've selected in true bearing, not magnetic. And it'll also show you the distance. 
However, especially if these are further distances, you'll find it takes a second or two for the rotaries to sort of catch up to the range you want. The faster way is on the PV800, pressing the bearing range to target point button. And as long as you've got something DL ingress or nav target selected, this shows the true bearing in six digits. So, yeah, it's not just the normal three digit compass bearing, but it's a six digit one unrounded. And below that, you get the range in kilometers. You can also press the desired track angle, desired heading button, this DTADH, which will show the true bearing to the target rounded to three digits. The second three digits on this top row is your estimated time of arrival at the target point based on your current speed in minutes. The bottom row is the distance to kilometers similar to bearing range to target. Obviously this estimated time of arrival is when your healer would arrive over that point. So if you needed to give an indication of when you would be within firing range, you'll need to make a guesstimate based on the current distance versus your firing distance and sort of proportion that into the ETA. Again, it's in minutes, so it's not down to the second accuracy. If you did a cold start, remember to switch this to either desired track or desired heading. In the middle position, your HSI and PV800 buttons at the bottom won't update information with your selected target and will show zero distance. Desired heading, the yellow marker and big white arrows all point to the target, but desired track, the yellow marker can occasionally wig out for a bit and should be ignored for targeting. Also, if you switch to desired track, the DTA button will show cross track error instead of heading if you're dealing with waypoint tracks. Also, if you explicitly change the HSI to work with a manual heading, then it's stuck to whatever you set using a knob rather than changing selection for your target. Setting it to manual and changing this heading array or track doesn't affect the navigation system, the HUD, or where root mode will steer you. It only affects this gauge and the information you're seeing. Finally, if there are any orange flags on the HSI, they're warnings showing there's calculation errors or problems with the nav system. So you might want to take the information then with a pinch of salt. Also note that while the ABRIS has an ARC and HSI page, these do not show headings or distances of selected target points and daily targets like the HSI. The headings and lines are those of radio beacons and flight plan waypoints depending what you've set the RMI settings to be. On the ARC and HSI pages also, you can use the rotary to manually set a heading of your choice that so won't do anything specifically. Finally, the HUD seems to round up to the nearest 100 meters. The PV800 buttons seem to round down, while the ABRIS shows a more exact value. But the values are normally quite close together, so just note that very small difference. This is Volk. Join me in the next video on sharing info with other airframes not in your daylink. Cheers.